Welcome back to another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. I'm your host, Gary Malefsky, and the publisher of Cyber Defense Magazine. And one of my favorite chief product officers of one of the coolest companies is Guy Rosefeld. He is at Sangfor. Sangfor Technologies is sangfor.com. If he looks familiar, we've done a hot seat in the past, but I wanted to catch up with him and learn what's going on with a company that has more than 100,000 customers worldwide, 23 years in business with 9,500 employees and growing with more than 60 branch offices around the globe, 2,200 patents. This is a leader in cybersecurity. So this is exciting to be with you today and have you in the hot seat, Guy. Hey, Gary, thanks for having me back. I always enjoy our conversations a lot. So, Same here. Now, you guys at Sangfor are always leading the charge on next generation things. You're catching the latest threats. Tell us how you do it. How are you getting all the latest APTs, the latest zero days, and how you handle that and, and help your clients defend against them? Okay, so we've got like 2,000 plus people in our R&D. 40% of our, our revenue goes to R&D. And out of that, we have several hundred researchers around the world looking for threats and stuff. We've deployed honeypots and ecosystems all around the world. We do have a ton in 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 North Asia and, and in China. So it makes it easiest for us to be able to find the latest Eastern-based zero-day threats as they come through. Be able to analyze them fairly quickly. We publish results. Um, we have our, our blogs in both in Chinese and English. Uh, we publish reports several times a year. We work with uh, regional governments uh, in different countries to let them know about threats that we see that might be persistent or pertaining to, to their areas. So we do a lot to, to try to make sure that we're good citizens and help the world see the things that are out there. And Guy, I think what you do is amazing. Uh, you also are one of the companies that helps really make the cloud happen. What does HCI stand for? Hyperconvergence something? Tell us about your HCI platform and who's using it and, and how long it's been around. Okay, so I'm excited to talk about the fact that we've just released our fourth generation hyperconvergent infrastructure. And hyperconvergent infrastructure basically is all the technology and the framework you need for deploying your own cloud, whether it's public cloud to, to offer services or private cloud for in-house type stuff. Right. So it's basically all the software, all the infrastructure you need to be able to provide uh, services on demand, uh, software on demand, uh, virtual desktop technologies, virtual servers and security and all that type of stuff. And, and to be able to integrate, not just in your own private cloud, but if you have an organization that has resources in other clouds, for example, I've got stuff in AWS or Azure. Right. And I've got stuff I need to keep my own private cloud, but I need to give people access to all that stuff. I need to be able to manage it. We have hybrid technology that allows us to be able to manage across public and private clouds uh, very easily through a single pane of glass. That's amazing. Now, one of the things a lot of companies have to deal with, especially your larger clients, is branch offices in all different disparate locations. How do you help them secure those branch offices? Because to me, the weakest link might be some office in a remote location that doesn't have the same level of security at you know the SOC or the headquarters of the big data center. So one of the earliest paths that we had was building SD-WAN technology. So we have several SD-WAN uh, products, both hardware and software based. Uh, one of the things that we've seen from customers, especially from the pandemic was, they wanted to reduce O&M costs. They wanted to reduce infrastructure costs. They want to pay for extra technology to do the SD-WAN. So what we've done is we've integrated the SD-WAN technology directly into our next generation application firewall. So now I can deploy a next gen firewall or NGAF at the corporate location or any site. And then anybody can VPN directly into that from anywhere in the world, or they can take a smaller version of the firewall and deploy it at a branch office protect them that's connected to the internet. And then they'd be able to connect a direct SD-WAN connection between the two and be able to have uh, direct connectivity, uh, control of bandwidth, optimization of bandwidth, and the ability to control the applications that travel down, down the SD-WAN channel. We're also just uh, pushed out globally our new SASE offering called Sang for Access. And that allows you to, instead of having to build your own SD-WAN infrastructure, you can basically plug into our cloud uh, 
and be able to do uh, SD-WAN from your branch office to our cloud, again, using our firewall technology. And then you have the ability to protect any resources on the other end of our cloud uh, by subscribing to security services like firewall and IDS and application control and endpoint management and that type of stuff. That's incredible. And how long does it take to spin this up? Um, it's easy for you to go and, and log in and subscribe. And once you subscribe, you can set up your environment um, within probably 30 minutes or, or, or thereabouts, depending on how big your infrastructure is. So That's it, it's, it's, it's designed to be self-service. It's designed to be easy to use. And we're, we're building pops all around the world. Uh, we've got Hong Kong, we've got Malaysia. We're deploying in Indonesia and Thailand, uh, Philippines, Italy, and the Middle East will be coming later on this year. Amazing. Now you have thousands, as you said, thousands of employees working in R&D. What about in managed services? Can you offer managed services for the companies that need to offset some of their risk or get some help because you know they're having a challenge with hiring because the hiring dilemma in cybersecurity is just getting worse and worse every day? So we've deployed some new technology for that in the cloud too. So our, our SASE service, our managed security services, our managed services activities are, are built on some newer technology we have, which we call XDDR2. Uh, we're trying to find a better name for it, like, I don't know, Correlation X or, or, or Synergy X or some, some really cool marketing name. We haven't figured out what that is yet. But it's the new underlying technology that basically pulls together our Cyber Command Threat Intelligence Threat Hunting Platform. Uh, it pulls in our Platform X legacy management platform for, for services in the cloud. We've integrated all that stuff together. We've been able to put in third-party integration for threat hunting and, and analysis of stuff. And we'll, we've built this platform that now allows you to provide not just managed services, uh, but uh, remote stock operations. Um, it allows our partners to actually resell the technology so they can actually OEM it themselves and be able to offer services white labeled as them to their local customers. Um, and as I said, we're, we're doing it with the countries with the pops that we have coming in right now. Um, as I said, right now, Hong Kong, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, and Thailand are, are the first ones and, and the rest coming later on this year. So it's a very exciting time for us to be able to have an integrated unified security and cloud solution set that handles infrastructure, cloud technologies, and the hybrid between the two, depending on whatever customers position is or where they are in the middle of their digital transformation journey. That's phenomenal. Now you're trusted worldwide, but you know, we have this issue going on, uh, even though, you know, most goods ship in, people buy things on Amazon, everything they buy is usually made in China. U.S. has a tenuous, but it seems a long-term relationship with China. Your headquarters are China, Your most of your engineers are in China. Uh, but you are trusted worldwide. Why wouldn't someone in the U.S. want to buy your firewall or get your service up yeah. and running? Well, you know, there, there's a lot of things that say, you know, how do we know you don't have backdoor? So we're working very hard. We've got third-party certifications that show how secure technologies are. We're working on getting additional third-party certifications to be able to validate and show you that we don't have backdoors. We don't have malicious code. You know, as long as we can show that other people have tested us and found us secure and they can say that we are good enough to put in any type of situation, that is important to us. So we want to show that Sangfor is a global company. We're not a Chinese company. We're a global company. Like I said, we've got 60 offices all around the world. And you know, we have a lot of organizations that trust in us. Uh, manufacturing, we have education, we have governments around the world that use our technology and believe in us. You know, we're cost effective. Um, we're a lot less expensive than a lot of Western technologies, which is why we're very popular. But at the same time, we want to show that we are secure and that we're good citizens and you know we want to ensure that you can trust our products to be safe, secure, uh, and able to protect your organization without fear of, of data being leaked or stolen. And Guy, one of the advantages that you brought up early, which I think is so important, is you guys get the latest threats before most people. You're a, one step ahead of the latest APTs, the latest ransomware, the latest zero day. I would want a solution on my network to help me defend against that. I, I don't want to get the latest threat and have a solution that can't quite understand what it is. And on, and on that note, with so many thousands of people in R&D, are you guys starting to advance in AI? I mean, there's a lot of talk about ChatGPT waking the world up that AI is important. 
I have a feeling you've been using AI machine learning for a while, but can you speak to that? Sure. Uh, we actually have been using AI for a long time. Uh, if you go back to our, our next generation application firewall, NGAF, it is the first next generation firewall that had AI built into it to be able to do malware analysis and detection. Okay, so we've already had that in place. We have our cloud threat intelligence infrastructure with multiple threat intelligence engines in there being able to look and parse it, the information that we see coming in through all these data streams and threat intel feeds that we get, being able to correlate and corroborate the stuff that we see to, to better identify threats with lower, lower false positives and, 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 and lower um, false negatives. Our cyber command threat hunting platform, as I said, and which is which is being transitioned into our managed service platform, our XTDR 2.0, has 16 purpose-built AI engines looking for very specific behavior. And that's that's a very important point. You know, you can't use general AI technology to fight threats. The biggest problem that we've seen in the last couple of years is that the bad guys have figured out how to weaponize AI and put that into the malware. So if you looked at the solar winds attack, if you look at some of the new APTs that are out there. The malware is smart enough to figure out where it is, the environment it's in. Am I in a, a domain that is, supports Russia, in which case I'll shut myself off? Am I in the domain of the company I'm looking for? Or am, am I in a country that I consider to be an enemy? It looks for those kind of things and says, OK, I will do a bunch of checks to make sure. Hmm, I'm going to try to disable the security uh, checks on the server. And then I'm going to go to sleep for a while. And then I'm going to wake up and see if anybody figured out I turn the security checks off. If nobody knows, I'll go on from there. So this these APTs are becoming so much smarter now in terms of being able to circumvent traditional technologies. You need AI to fight the AI. But again, it can't just be general purpose AI. It needs to be purpose-built AI looking for very specific behaviors. So we have AI that can actually look at encrypted HTTPS traffic. I don't have to decrypt it. I can look at the metadata and I can look at the traffic flows to be able to identify anomalous behavior, such as someone who's trying to exfiltrate data in the middle of the night um, from your organization to a command and control server someplace. We're looking for uh, user and uh, application entity behavior type stuff. We're looking for low and slow behavior. You have to have individual AI modules looking for each type of stuff because that's the only way you're going to be able to find something because general purpose stuff just doesn't have what it takes to be able to find everything, right? So we've spent a lot of money. We spent a lot of time. We spent a lot of resources invested in AI to help us figure out how to find some of these new threats with a high degree of success and fidelity. And we have some new advancements in AI coming out later on this year that uh, we hope you guys will get a kick out of. Sounds fantastic. And also, I heard that Gartner seems to love your firewall. You got rave reviews from the folks at Gartner. Oh yeah, we went, we've been in, we are now in the uh, innovator uh, uh, quadrant for the last two years, which has been huge. Um, you know, but we've been in Gardner for eight nine years now. I think it is. You know, but the fact that they're that now seeing it as as being innovators is 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 a is is a great thing for us because now they now believe our technology is up there with everybody else if not more so, you know, it's just now that we have to be able to expand our reach to, to more customers to be able to show how good the technology is. So guys, thank for technology is truly a market leader and an innovator, which is wonderful. Is there anything else you want to cover that we hadn't talked about uh, for our viewers and listeners? Um, so a couple of things that we've, we've talked about now is we've got the managed services stuff you know, we've, we've deployed around the world. We've come out with our next generation uh, endpoint secure product, which now bridges between EPP endpoint protection to uh, endpoint detection response and beyond that. Because one of the things that our products do is our products integrate and talk to each other they have for, for a very long time. So my firewall can control my endpoint technology and say, you know, what? I see endpoint, you're talking to a command and control server, are you infected? Go run a scan, tell me what's wrong. And the firewall can make access control decisions based upon that, including telling the firewall to go into micro segmentation mode and disconnect itself from, from the network so it can't do lateral spread. So we have these kind of technologies that are built into our products and we're expanding on those with our new cyber command technology um, we've now deployed our new uh, third-party integration package, which allows us to talk to, right now, I think we talked about 15 different uh, security products that you can integrate data into so that we can use it for not only for threat hunting, but also do SOAR, 
so we can do automated response with our with our playbook. And we're getting ready to release a toolkit that allows customers to be able to integrate their own security apps into that if they're not on our list of 15. So these are some of the new things that we have coming out. Oh, one more that I'm really excited about later on this year. I shouldn't talk about it, but we have deception technology built into our firewall, which we are releasing um, in the next version. So that's going to be a, a big, huge thing. That's fantastic. I, I love deception technology. You know, sometimes we have to go on the offense. And if we can get the bad guys to spend just a few extra seconds or minutes in the wrong place at the wrong time, we can catch them. And yeah. so that's, you know, back to time-based security. Your team understands AI, machine learning, time-based security, uh, spinning up VMs uh, faster than others, uh, self-access to security tools, branch office security, which to me is so important because they're usually the weaker underbelly. You've got it all. Sang first, got it all. Guy, this has been a wonderful interview. I'm so glad to have you back in the hot seat. And I want our folks to go to sangfor.com to learn more. Go to Sangfor, try them out. I think you'll be so incredibly impressed. And then come back next time for another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. Cyber Defense TV and Cyber Defense Radio have launched 24 by 7 by 365 live streams. Visit them online today at cyberdefense.tv and cyberdefense.radio with your host and globally recognized cybersecurity expert and my good friend, Gary Malewski.